live from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's The Cube. At the VTUG Winter Warmer 2015. Now, here is your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's live video production. Go out to all the big enterprise IT shows, help extract the signal from the noise. I'm really excited for the wrap up to have a longtime friend of theCUBE, a friend of mine, actually the first, one of the first people I knew that was involved with Wikibon uh, before I was involved. Uh, John MacArthur, president of Walton Technology Partners. Thank you, John, for helping me uh, do kind of an analyst wrap up segment to talk about the VTUG. Thank you, Stu, appreciate being on. Yeah, so uh, if, if, if you don't know John, you probably should, and you probably know people that know John because uh, you know here in, definitely in New England, in the storage industry or tech in general, uh, you know, John, John's one of my go-to people. He's just really uh, knows a lot of the people, he advises a bunch of businesses out there, um, and uh, you know, just, just one of the nicest guys too, because I uh, appreciate <laughs> you can help me out here. Uh, we're here at Gillette Stadium, you've got your Patriot colors on with I the do, Jerry Garcia yeah. tie. Um, all right, John, so, you know, Chris Harney this morning when I was like, you know, it's the ninth year you've been doing this VTUG, he's like, wow, where did the time go? Yeah. It's like, we're here in 2015, right. you know, it's, can't believe that it was a year ago that we were here. You and I get to talk at a lot of industry events and, and off uh, at other times. Um, you, you got to see a lot more of the show than I did. I did, uh, yeah. So, you know, what, what, what's your impression? You know, the, the, the good, the bad, or are there, it seemed like maybe a few less people than I'm used to. I know Chris said there's over a thousand here, but yeah, uh, I, it, it's a good show. I, I, I'm never in, I don't, I'm not counting heads when I, as I'm walking around. What I am looking for is, you know, are the users here and are the vendors there and are, get, are they getting good traffic? at the booths and are they learning new things? Actually, uh, one of your previous guests was talking about a company that I hadn't seen before. Um, they, they're a fairly large uh, company, it sounds like, but uh, Printer Logic um, and that, that eliminates the need for uh, print servers. So that's a really well-defined kind of market. And the, um, but it was good talking, catching up with them and I think you know, he'll take that back to, to his people. So you know, I think this is a show where people can come and see new technology or see technology they haven't seen before and maybe take something back to the home office. Yeah, and it's also you know just one 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 of the best community events here in the yeah. in the in the Northeast. Uh, you know, we get everybody from you know Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, you know Rhode Island, you know a little bit of Connecticut, uh, and of, and of course here in Massachusetts. A good location here at Gillette. You know, Teddy's been watching us all day. Uh, we're hoping that they bring home another championship. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, he doesn't give me the elbow there. That, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> All right, so, 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 so John, um, you, you wrote a really interesting blog post that we've been talking about called The Theory of One. Uh, can, can you give our audience a little bit about, you know, wh what is The Theory of One and what, what have you been seeing today at the show uh, when you've been poking around? So the Theory of One came out of a little bit of self-reflection and actually some conversations. I mentioned a, 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 a friend of mine, uh, uh, Ian Barrett, who's over at uh, Media Boss TV. Um, and we were, t we were reflecting back on the fact that I'm coming, uh, knowing that VTUG's now in its uh, ninth year, I'm in my eighth year, finishing up my eighth year uh, since founding Walden Technology Partners, and I was looking back at the things where I've had the best and biggest impact on companies, where, um, and it's really in helping companies define the one thing that they are better at than, than anyone else in a segment, and I started thinking about that and recognizing that it's a real differentiator with companies if they can focus on doing one thing better. Uh, I did a follow-up post um, this week talking a little bit about Compellent, because I knew the Compellent team early on, and they, they really focused on capturing, believe it or not, Minneapolis. <laughs> as a, you know, they wanted to catch the, capture the mid-market for lawyers and, and, and mid-sized companies in Minneapolis, and once they had that established, they grow from there. So as I went around today, I was talking to a bunch of companies, I was like, how well defined is their message and um, and, and, and do they have a one thing where they can be the best? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the, the challenge we have, we talk about on this program, extracting the signal from the noise, there's so much going on out there that I might not understand the terminology or they all sound kind of the same. It's, you know, virtualization, cloud, you know, software defined, you know, buzzword, bingo, right. uh, you know, hello. So how did the vendor community do when you poked it, at it? It was, it, was, uh, it was a mixed bag. There were some that were 
excellent, and I, and I won't out them. You know, <laughs> the, but you, you won't out the excellent ones. Uh, no, yeah. no, sorry, I won't. Out, I won't <laughs> out the ones that, that that were a little less crisp. But you know, among ones that were really good is actually uh, uh, was uh, Data Core Vendor Agnostic HA was how they the the person who was uh, uh, who was at their booth was talking about their technology and. And I have some familiarity with them because uh, I'm on the board of Store Magic, as I think you know. And we sometimes see them in accounts. And so th it was a very um, that was a very crisp message. Um, Simplicity had a good crisp message: uh, optimize your data, more efficient backup, restore, uh, clone, access to data. Um, I, I especially liked um, um, I especially liked um, uh, like Grid Store, Hyper-V Erasure Code. Um, with 50% less um, uh, uh, infrastructure. Yeah, and that was one that was in the panel that I moderated. That yeah, they, they, they right. gave that answer. Right. That was a good one. It's John, John, I mean, you bring up a great point, especially in the startup world. I mean, I think we've all seen a couple of startups that you're like, they do some, they do some really good stuff, and then they failed, and you're like, why did they fail? Did it's they like, fail? well, they deployed to 100 customers, and 10 of them did the stuff that they really wanted, but the other 90 wanted to do 90 other things, and boy, it pulled us in yeah. 7 million directions, and I went under. It reminds me of, you know, you go to this really good restaurant, and they open up a second location, and then they go under right. in both. Yeah. And it's, we've seen this time and time again, yeah. it's like, ah, oh, all the reasons why companies can fail at that, and you know, so a singular focus and being clear yeah. about it is right. going to help you know, get the right people to you. That's right, and it, it, it doesn't mean that that single focus is what your focus always is, because things change. Once you get a dominant position in a market, you, you change your definition of one. So when I, I was a customer of EMC in the very early days, I replaced all of my IBM uh, mainframe storage with EMC storage in one fell swoop. Um, and uh, their, their definition was, at that time, was we just want your mainframe storage. You know? But then they added open system storage to that. And the definition was, I only want your enterprise storage. You know? I'm not looking for your branch office, remote office. And then they changed it. Yeah, I really want all your storage. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the best at all your storage. So they progressed their, their own theory of one as they expanded on. But, but while they were in a particular niche, even if that niche was large, it's a niche still, and they stayed focused on that. So I think that, that was a big yeah, difference. It's a great point, John. I mean, I, I think back, I did sales back in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. And okay. what, 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 what I really felt is, if there's something that working, that's working, hit it as fast and as hard as you can. Right. Because you never know when something's going to change. And right. pr it might not be, you know, I was working with you know, a large financial uh, company and they were like, oh, we're going to replace all of what we're doing. And the sales like, guy that I was working with was like, great, we'll do this over the next six months. And I was like, no, 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 we need to start moving. And we, after a month and a half, where we'd gotten about 75% of the branches updated, they got acquired and everything froze. And you're like, you're like, oh, uh, you know, yeah. you never know what's going to change. So That's you're right, right. it's, you know, we, we, there's a certain focus, you know, is, is such an important thing. Yeah. But for the bigger companies, as you said, it, it's tough. One of the things as an analyst we always get is, you know, vendor comes and we're going we're gonna to do the biggest event ever. And here's 27 bullet points that you come through. And it's like, if I'm a user, I'm not going to read 27 bullet points. Right. I'm not going to read three. It's That's you know, right. what's the big takeaway for me when I go to you know version X uh, of what's going on? Right. You know, uh, the, there's uh, I, I met with Storyant while I was walking around. I don't know if you've had no, I've not run across Storyant. them. What do they do? So, this is really simple. 18 nines availability. How are we doing? 18 nines availability uh, and SEC compliant. So okay. it's, it's basically fault um, tolerance space. Then I'm guessing. Yeah. Is, uh, so <laughs> right. So <laughs> this is um, that's that's pretty clear. Okay. Yeah. You must really care about this data. It's got to be around for a long time. 18 nines of availability. <laughs> um, that, uh, th that's good. So I don't know what all fits that. You know, I don't know who needs mm -hmm. that kind of availability. But if you need that. They're, they're yeah. probably the nope. only one that can make they, that There have today. been companies in the fault tolerance space for a long time, and yeah. there's, there's a lot that needs to be done to harden it. Yeah. Uh, come on, I, I was looking at all the cloud uh, for 2014, and uh, it's funny because if you look for a year's worth of data, and if a cloud didn't go down, it had 100% SLA, which I kind of laugh because, yeah. you know, 18 nines kind of makes me laugh a little bit, but 100%, we know it's never, right. uh, never that. So, uh, yeah. I'm curious, what, 
when you're when you're walking around, I'm just curious. You know, what are the hot buttons for user? You know, is cloud convergence? You know, the software defined storage or networking? What uh, what what are the things that they that they are really paying attention to now? We're looking well, to learn more about. So I just came back. I think I told you I was down at National Retail um, yeah. uh, Federation, the the big show. I think they call it. All right. Um, down in New York City on Tuesday, and it's clearly security and privacy and and all of that were big hot issues. But then the other, the other big issues were really around uh, what are the kinds of tools that give me personalization and ability to, to market, to targeted marketing, do, do near real time marketing, actually real time marketing based upon information that I capture about you as I'm walking, as you're walking oh, yeah, around the store. The, the, the impact of mobile on retail and yeah. uh, wait, are the, those coupons going to be buzzing on all our phones as we uh, walk around? Well, so they already are, yeah. right? if you're paying attention. Are, are, and uh, uh, there are, they could already be buzzing on your phones. Um, there, there are other things like, uh, I mean, I looked at one application which was basically, you don't have to try on the clothes, you just have to stand in front of you have to stand in this one spot and they put the clothes on you and you can change them, change the outfits and you can see what the back of your outfit looks like without turning around because the cameras are there and it just turns around. So there's some, there's some cool slick stuff. Um, the, the question that I always come back to is, okay, so what are the availability requirements for those kinds of applications? You know, is it, is it, are it does your whole customer experience, now that it's dependent on these applications, does your whole customer experience change when the network goes down or the server goes down? I was, I was talking to uh, Bill Exidius. Um, uh, he's, a, he's with uh, Integration Partners, and so he's one of many, there are so many, there are a lot of resellers, system integrators here. And I'm always curious about how they differentiate, right? So he's, I said, so wh what's your one thing? What's the one thing that you're better at? And he says, understanding the upstream and downstream impact of changes in the network. Right, yep. and so as, if anybody here is a, a network person, you know, you may get the data there faster, but if you can't in, if you can't deal with it when it gets there faster, you may just end up with a clogged uh, receiver. Right, so um, that, I thought that was a nice crisp story. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Let's come back to a little bit at the show. Yeah, uh, sure. what, what's always interested me in the VTUG is being a virtualization show. Yeah. You know, try to get a good, honest opinion of what's happening with VMware as well as what's happening with Microsoft, yeah. with Amazon, and everything. I had a re really enjoyed the interview today uh, with Dan Stolt from Microsoft um, because you know their one thing it's you know it's really Azure. But Azure is public yeah. cloud and private cloud because Hyper-V kind of rolls into that, and it is a really crisp clear, understandable, hybrid cloud message that if I have my own infrastructure, I know how to get there. As opposed to hybrid, to most people is a disjointed message. It's, I got some here and I've got some there and I've got some other things yeah. and I've got pieces. Yeah. Microsoft at least has a crisp message on it and as we, we dug into a bunch of pieces because I mean, you know, Xbox and Office right. 365 um, and boy, Dan talked really fast, but if we slow it down, <laughs> um, boy, there was really good metadata yeah. uh, and VMware, um, I don't think it's been following the uh, you know kind of theory of one lately because VMware's got a lot of different solutions. I think their messaging has pulled it back together. At a show like this, most of the people are happy with VMware. They're not yeah, yeah, yeah. you know throwing it out or saying they hate them. Look. Yeah, there's a little bit of the undercurrent of you know Microsoft users, which most VMware customers are are choosing Hyper V and are looking at Azure um, and you know. Amazon plays into things and everything right. else, but you know, what, what, what do you see in that space? Well, yeah, so, so I think I think uh, VMware's getting better at recognizing places where they uh, where they work well and places where they and, and places where they can't take their technology as much. So you know, you you, uh, you know they they launched vSAN and that's had some that's had some really 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 good buzz. You know, but I think the the notion of taking vSAN way down market is sort of not not going to happen. They tried the low-end product with VSA, they killed it, you know, so you got those kinds of things. I'm certainly hearing a lot about um, Microsoft Hyper-V. I heard a lot about Hyper-V when I was down at the retail show. As well, the retailers are very much focused on, a lot of them are focused on on Hyper-V. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing that and and I'm seeing more focus on a desire for um, uh, high, you know, highly available applications. The question that I see most CIOs not being able to answer is how do I deliver high availability 
And um, they, they would like to get rid of all of the infrastructure in, um, and pull everything back to a private cloud or, a public, or, or not so much a public cloud, but a private cloud. But when you start looking at the performance um, implications of doing that for certain applications, it just becomes really hard. So I would say most of the application vendors that I talk to um, would say their, route to, their first route to market is as a cloud offering, so, you know, some software as a service. And when, when you press them on how many of your customers are actually doing it that way, it's much less. So I'm certainly seeing some mixed messages around cloud. Um, I don't. I don't know what you're saying. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so you know, the the march to cloud is, is happening. It's not going away anytime no, it's not, soon. it's real. Um, but you know, absolutely, it, it's really kind of an application by application it discussion. Um, there, there was a. You know, how many applications do I have, and how often do I refresh them? Right. You know, it's, that's it, exactly it, right. It, 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 one of the biggest challenges I saw, um, and you know, look, I, I've been involved in virtualization for you know since like 2002 is when I started yeah. working with VMware, and it had huge, wonderful things that it did for IT. But the the one thing that it did really well that actually has hurt us in the long run is it allowed me to keep things running the way that they'd run for a long time. So in 2002, right. number one use case was Windows NT. That's was right. going to go end of service, right. let me just stick it in a VM and leave it there for another 10 years. Right. And you're sitting there saying, this is already old and really time to update it, and let's go to the new ones. Uh, you know, so I, I should go to more you know, applications yeah. that are built for mobile, applications that are built sure. for scalability and work my environment. If I'm custom building my stuff, yeah. there's probably somebody else doing it better. I worked. I worked maybe, with it. May, yeah. maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah. So, I, so I, I mean, I was, you know, one one of my clients has, uh, you know, de development team that's driving real differentiation for them based upon the applications that, they, based on the applications that they write. Um, you know, I came out of banking, I was at State Street Bank, and we had a plan to rewrite an application to go to a mo more modern database. When I left there 20 years ago, that they, they planned to be off that database in five years. It took them 20 years to do it, because right. rewriting code takes a long time. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, John, one, one of the key things I have is when I put something in place, how long am I stuck with it? If I build a data center, it's right. 25 to 35 years. If I buy a storage array, five years, seven years, yep. if I build a database, I mean, you're with that forever. Uh, right. So, you know, right. and when I deploy it, two years from now, has it gone anywhere or is it static? Banking environments, love the banks, what do they do? Gold image, uh, I make a gold image and I replicate yep. it a thousand times and you know, every, you know, what, 24 months or so, I might look at changing that gold image, but that was a, you know, do it in the sandbox and then roll it out yeah. as opposed to, look, well, you're thinking I, more I, I'm, retail I'm branch not saying banking, it, I'm not yeah, saying it's yeah. all, you know, uh, you know, unicorns, uh, John, that, you know, we should have everything on the latest version, like, you know, the, the core OS message is like what Chrome is, is when I deploy something today, when you know there's a major security issue and there's a patch tomorrow, I've got yeah. it. When I go deploy yeah. on Microsoft Azure or AWS, I don't worry about being on the latest patch because I'm there. If I right. go deploy hyper-converged, yeah, right. I can add those patches much in and roll it out. So That's right. the non-disruptive upgrade needs to just go to non-disruptive IT. Yeah, and I do know? think, you know, we talked a little bit about security, and I do think that the security issues associated with staying on legacy platforms, legacy operating systems, legacy apps with holes that you have, new, you know, I think that that's probably one of the things that will dr have some impact on driving customers. Certainly, it's caused an enormous refresh, tech refresh at some of the retailers. Um, <laughs> I had one retailer say to me recently, I, I kind of wish we had a, a, a target-like um, um, uh, attack because I, I would then get a budget. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, let, let, me, let me ask you, you were at the retail show and everything else. Yeah. I mean, security is always a top concern, but it, when it comes down to budgeting, it's always underfunded. So, yeah. you know, are things changing? Uh, you know, are they really going to move? I mean, there, there's some really exciting startups. Uh, right. You know, not only VMware's doing some cool things, I've seen yep. a, a number of startups like, uh, uh, you know, Illumio and uh, uh, what was that? The, yeah, there's the a couple others that are yeah. doing, you know, it, it's no longer about the perimeter, it's about doing things inside and microservices. And right. it, 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 it's the short answer is I don't know. Yeah. But you know, the short answer is I don't know uh, from the security applications perspective. What I do know is that it is, it is driving customers to look at tech refreshes faster. They see the vulnerability of failing to do tech refreshes. Whether or not it's going to drive new security apps, 
not, they're, they're looking for more from just getting newer operating systems and applications, you know, packaged apps that are, that are, that are more current. All right, so uh, John, you, you've had a chance to look around and you, you've been in this community, uh, yep. the VTUG, for a long time. Is it, what's, what's the theory of one for the VTUG? Oh, for the VTUG, that's a great question. So, you know, I, one, one of the things, for me, it is the best vendor neutral, right now, the best vendor neutral uh, forum to show um, the end user customers in New England the latest technology. Now, bar none, I don't think anybody else does it as ven in a, such a vendor neutral way. And I'm going to refine that to in New England, yeah. right? So the, so the question, I think they've captured the market here for it. Um, the question then becomes, how do they, should they then expand and how do they expand and in, in, which, in which ways? Yeah, really interesting challenge because the industry trade shows have just fallen the, off uh, you know, the last few years. The, the cross industry. The trade. cross industry, yeah, like the, storage the old networking storage world networking world. Even my own conference when yeah. I was at IDC, which was a sort of a cross industry. Yep. I, I will tell you, I, uh, I was at Gartner Data Center Conference uh, on behalf of Store Magic, um, and I will say that was a large conference with lots of interested, excited users. So yes. I, I hadn't been to a Gartner mm -hmm. conference in um, 20 years since I was at State Street Bank. So uh, you know that was that was an interesting experience. But they were engaged people, and that was a vendor neutral forum but not an analyst neutral forum. Yeah, right? a a absolutely, John. I mean, we, we, we do some of our own events. We've got uh, Big Data Silicon Valley coming up where we bring together lots of users. We're going to have a great VC panel. We had done a capital markets event down in New York City, so, you know, but it's a small event. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, we're, we're looking to get, you know, a couple hundred people in there um, and, you know, yeah. share information and do videos and things like that. It's, sure. uh, you know, it's, it's tough. The event business is, is a lot of work behind the scenes. Uh, as you know, though, because you're at, what, 60 events a year? now? Yeah, the, the Cube's what? been at 60. Thankfully, thankfully I don't need to travel you don't have that to go all much. 60. But, uh. what, what, you know, when you go around, I'll, I mean, I'll ask you, but um, yeah, uh, the, if you go to if you go to the EMC world, or you go to VM world, or you go to Oracle Open World, or you go to, um, you were at Salesforce, Dreamforce, mm -hmm. right? Um, the, the, the number of attendees at those vendor non-neutral events was enormous. Yeah. I, and I think the industry specific events like like um, National Retail Federation that I was at Tuesday, there were 45,000 people there. Yeah, right. So they're, they're, they're industry specific. Right. And HIMSS is, is, is in the, in the HIMSS healthcare, is, huge, is right. phenomenal. Right. NAB for, for the media for product, is, yeah, is, is right. still great. CES for the consumer right. is still huge. But in the enterprise tech world, the vendor shows have the replaced shows. Uh, the, the independent shows. I mean, top cloud show of the year is Amazon, without a doubt. Top application shows, probably Oracle Open World. Yeah, and in and the big data space, is, you know, in EMC the big data world space, and, what's the biggest uh, conference? It, it's usually, it's the uh, Hadoop world and Hadoop Summit, which, right. uh, you know, O'Reilly, but then, right, Hortonworks really kind of drives it. And right. A little bit more independence in big data because it's yeah. early-ish, yeah. um, but it's driving there. All right, so, uh, John, want to want to give you the just kind of final word, uh, you know, w w w discussions you're having with users. What's the most important things to them, um, and uh, you know, what what should they be be looking for out there? What's the most important thing for a user today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I think finding suppliers who are very clear on what they do. I, I, I'm going to quote a I'm going to quote uh, a, C, a VP of uh, of um, uh, of uh, the data center. At a, at a retail chain, that, uh, at a restaurant chain that I spoke to recently. She said, if any vendor comes in and says that their technology integrates seamlessly with what I have, I throw them out. Okay, so honesty, trans what, vendors, what customers are looking for is vendors who will listen, who will be honest, who will be direct, and uh, around whether they're a fit or they're not a fit. All right, sounds, sounds like they're tired of the old platitudes too, so we're going to wrap on that. Uh, John, thanks so much as always for, for coming on the program and, and helping out here uh, during the day. It's been a real great day here at the VTUG. Uh, of course, uh, if you go actually bit.ly slash VTUG, all capitalization, FT, VTUG 2015 has the links to all of these videos. Uh, lots of articles, lots of videos. The Cube's going to be at a ton of shows this year. Uh, reach out to us if uh, you don't 
see us uh, listing the event that you think we should be at, always reach out to us. Uh, I'm at Stu on Twitter. Uh, it's at the Cube is what's going on. We've got Wikibon, Silicon Angle, the Cube, uh, crowd chats given the social. Uh, uh, conversation throughout many of the shows. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, from Gillette Stadium and uh, go Patriots.